Hello and welcome to a quick uh, KSP presentation. My name is Kamado7 or Nasonator2G3. Uh, here we have the Mameluke. If I can go back into. There we go. Uh, in this aircraft, I'm just going to do a very quick presentation. This is going to be a very short video. Uh, first video I've ever done for KSP. So, that being said, is I've basically put this aircraft together with a buddy of mine. Um, it was uh, late last night and sometime tonight. I just did a little bit of a review here, uh, asked him to do a little piece for it. Uh, so all in all, this thing is just a passenger jet considering the new parts that you, we've received with KSP. Uh, it was supposed to have 14 in this model, I've removed it. I might actually update the, uh, the KSP thing um, to include the 14 seater. This one only includes 10 seats, I advertised for 14, so hopefully nobody's pissed off at me that it's missing uh, 4 seats, but it's very, very easy to add the other 4 seats, so I do apologize for that, I, I guess I could change it, but all in all, I, I've i been tinkering around with this so much that it's been a little bit hectic. Uh, so that being said is uh, all the seats are placed at the, near the center of mass, that way if you have more kerbals on one side than the other, it won't affect you too much. Uh, we do have 14 140 uh, pieces of liquid fuel, all designed so that the center of mass uh, goes and stays pretty much right in the middle. They're not on the outside tanks or anything like that. Um, now, granted, you can add more on the bottom. I have had this thing up to about 3,000 liquid fuel, uh, but that being said, is this one only holds 1440. So we're going to go ahead and take off here. I'm just going to show you guys uh, a quick display as to what the Mameluke can do. I wanted my... Uh, Mark the that mod that uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but he made an awesome interior for the Mark III. Uh, so bravo to you, whoever you are. Uh, but that being said, is this is not going to work well. So we're going to do this all in 3D mode. Um, I don't have any kerbals inside right now. I would like to uh, demonstrate how you would get kerbals inside, and that's just from this ladder. I'm not going to do it. Uh, a side note: if you're going to put kerbals in here, I would recommend you uh, have them in their RCS jetpack. Uh, walking around because that way they won't fall over as easily but as you can see the ladder is really low to the ground it'll pop you up right inside let me go ahead and come back here uh, and there's a little socket ladder here that it's, it works perfectly for getting them inside. I've yet to have a problem with getting a Kerbal inside of this craft. Uh, it has the Kerbal Catch system <laughs> patented, thank you. Um, it's not very nice. As you can see, it's a little crew that likes to catch up on itself and tends to break sometimes upon takeoff. Uh, so I tend to keep it um, back that way because the only thing it's there for is just to make sure that kerbals don't fall out and of course if you can see this little slot here this is water landing capable I would not actually recommend landing it on the water for takeoff because once it touches the water it's probably not going to come back up now you'll notice we have a buttload of parachutes it's about 10 parachutes one for each passenger uh, passenger rather uh, you can add anything you want to this modify it however you want of course I'm not the mod police you do whatever you want with it uh, but this is basically designed so if it touches down in the water as the previous versions we had uh, there was just a big box here basically and it came down to here so we had a wing strut coming across uh, and you could not get in or out the idea was that you would just be walking under it anyway but I did not take into consideration the water landing that it would be pretty much level with the wings and you would not be able to get out of the aircraft or in it so I made this little hole here uh, so that you're capable of getting in and out of the aircraft and it also works pretty well because it's at an angle if you can see as catching kerbals if they happen to fall out of their seats, which, by the way, should not happen because we have the patented Kerbal Catch system. Regardless, it's time to take off. It's going to get a little bit loud here. Now, we're going to use uh, Q and E to control this thing and uh, turn it. Now, it is not a very agile... Oh, wow. I can't believe this. I, I moved it too late so that we went off the runway. Please ignore that part. It might be something wrong with the design itself. It might be something wrong with the way I was piloting there, but if you happen to have that problem, I am sorry. Uh, regardless, is it still took off just fine. It was a little bit messy on the runway there. It doesn't like to taxi, I'll say that much, but we are airborne, and if we had Kerbals inside, they would be flying right now, not a problem. Um, and that being said, is it has the 1440 uh, fuel, the max design speed for this at its altitude, uh, or max altitude as well, max ASL altitude to sea level, is uh, 10 clicks sea level at uh, 400 meters per second approximately. So that being said, is it's pretty fast. Uh, you can change the jet engines if you really want to. Maybe even mix and match so that some of the jets are higher performance than the others. It's entirely up to whatever you guys want to do with it. Mod the hell out of it, I don't care. Uh, that being said, it's made it all the way to the circular crater, all the way out here. 
Uh, it basically crashed just before then because I was up really high trying to get to it and I was being stupid. So I had it basically in physical time acceleration for about 20 minutes getting across this entire continent. I actually crashed into this mountain a lot of the times, but the gears saved my life. Uh, that being said, is it is a pretty damn durable aircraft. It's reliable in the, sim in the fact that it uh, doesn't necessarily go where you don't want it to go in its SAS mode. So if I put it right there, I can basically go physical time acceleration confidently, and don't and I, I don't have to worry about it uh, veering off by too much. Of course, uh, four times physical time acceleration is hard on any aircraft. But that being said, is I usually do it on three because it's it's pretty damn stable at three. So you can do whatever you want with this aircraft, of course. It's right there. I just wanted to give a quick presentation. Hopefully you guys enjoy. I am not going to show you the landing in this episode. Sorry for that, but you can uh, rest assured it's uh, fully capable of landing and the parachutes work, both for slowing the aircraft down, stability if you want to. Uh, it's got to be a huge waste of fuel um, if you fly like that. But uh, all in all, it is capable of landing in the water. Um, so that being said, thank you once again for watching. My name is uh, Nasonator or Kabato7, uh, and hopefully you guys enjoy this aircraft and other uh, features to come. So lastly, I'd just like to go into physical time acceleration. Oh, actually, I don't even need to. There we go. Now we'll go into physical time acceleration until we touch the water, and I'll show you what I mean just because I have the opportunity. And this is something I've tried to resolve in the past, just the nosedive effect. I don't like that. I'd like it to come down nice and horizontally, but it tends to come in a nosedive. So here we go. Let's hope it freaking survives. No, it's upside down. Oh. Well, it, it kind of survived. It's not supposed to be upside down, but I guess you're supposed to be running the jets a little bit more but we have a boat now cool let's let's end this goodbye